just like I promised, the fool in that review of the Moza Aircross is here. As you know, I don't like to make reviews before actually using a product in a professional way, just like a commercial shoot or wedding. Now I am ready for an in-depth review. If you are new on my channel, you might follow up the link in the description and check the 10 things that I like about the Moza Aircross 2. We are ready, let's go straight to the unboxing. You'll get the Moza Aircross 2 in a social case that makes your life easy, if you want to carry around a hard way or when traveling to avoid damage. I got the professional kit that includes also the phone mount and the Moza iFocus M. So in the package you will get the Moza Aircross 2, the L bracket, the Arca Swiss quick release plate, the Moza iFocus follow focus motor, the focus motor rod, the smartphone hot shoe mount, the camera riser plate and a variety of cables to control your Nikon, Canon, Panasonic and Sony. You get also well designed sturdy tripod stand and the manual. The Moza Aircross 2 has an innovative L bracket design that allows you to switch your camera vertically and shoot vertical videos in no time. Let's go to the buttons, ports and battery layout. At the bottom you will find an 1 quarter mount and an 3 8 mount. The battery is a newly designed enclosed shell removal system that will give you up to 12 hours of shooting and it will charge fully in about one and a half hour. The battery has also four LED light indicators so you will be able to check the charge. Let's go straight to the main control functions. When you have balanced your desired camera system you can power up the Moza Aircross 2 by holding the power button on the wheel knob. You will be presented by a rotating breathing color ring. Nice touch! In the front you will find the 4-way control knob, center record button and the joystick. On the back is the today standard trigger. On the other side there is USB-C firmware upgrade port and the CAN boost power output option if you want to power some external stuff like say a monitor. The 3 axis motor lock are a great welcome for that sturdy carrying option. On the bottom tilt arm there are also two CAN inputs for your dedicated follow focus cables. Yes, you can actually mount two follow focus eye focus and follow focus motors and control them by selecting which one on the screen. On the top tilt arm there is the port for controlling your camera with a cable. Let's get to the menu system layout. The rocker 4-way button allows you to control the straightness of the motor from 0 to 100. Pressing the upper button you can lock the tilt or release the tilt motor. Left button to lock or follow the roll motor and down to lock or follow the pen motor. Holding down the red record button you enter a really deep elaborate menu system that is actually the most configurable gimbal without the app in the market right now. The camera cable selector, I am using the M3C micro that will allow you to control the parameters like ISO, shutter and aperture value via the gimbal knob, record and stop recording. Under gimbal settings menu we have the motor switch on or off for the motors. Select the power of the motor with the option to auto tune, making the gimbal dance for a couple of seconds. Select the level of the strength by hand and a custom setup. The filter option to filter out all the motors to avoid undesired micro movements. The follow option and select which motor will be turned or on off. The speed of the follow and the deadband for each axis so you can really fine tune your gimbal to achieve a perfect custom fit. On the operation menu you can select the operation, sensitivity, habits and joystick. The wheel option will allow you to choose what function to control like the follow focus motor or actually one of the motor sensitivity and habits. The trigger menu will allow you to select what will the trigger do when you attach the camera or when hold it, click the double or click the triple. On the advanced option menu you will find the auto tune option. Balance check where you can actually get a notification if your balance isn't right and which axis to rebalance. The follow focus control for each focus motor and there is also a custom dolly zoom control option. Then we have the inception speed control motion sensing for that mimic control, 
tracking option when using the app. Manual control and the calibration with the angle offset. Under the general settings menu, you can change the language, set a custom configurable setup and load it, and check the firmware version. The Moza Aircross 2 can be also controlled via the app. You will be able to remote control it with the two joysticks. Mimic control it with your phone and gyroscope. Enter all the menu settings that we showed via the built-in OLED screen and make a creative video. Motion lapse, train recording, variable speed time lapse. Use the object tracking function when having your phone mounted on top of your camera and selecting an object of interest or make a fixed point time lapse. On the more mode, you will be able to select FPV, inception mode and sport gear. Recenter the gimbal and put it on the slip, powering off the motors. You can enter inception mode by pressing three times the right button. It will give you the various options and speeds to control it. A full 360 roll, just 180 roll and continuous. Pressing three times the left button, you will enter FPV mode, where all the axes follow. And we are going straight to the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K camera and what stuff you might actually build up with the Moza Aircross 2. The Moza Aircross 2 is capable of holding the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K camera and some lighter lenses. You should mount the Blackmagic directly on the L-plate, as close as possible to the far end of the vertical side of the L-plate. From my experience, the best way to mount the full focus motor is on your one quarter mount on top of your Blackmagic, and then use the included road. I'm using here the Canon FD 50mm f1.4 with a dummy adapter. All the lighter primes from Panasonic and Olympus should work really well with this setup. Even the smaller adapted lenses like the FD series Canon or also the Helios Russian lenses. I would not advise to use the Sigma 18 35mm with the speed booster on the Blackmagic with this setup. It will be really front heavy and we tested and it can hold the weight. Actually, you are always using a case built up around the black magic, and it makes all this setup kind of hard. I would rather recommend to use the Moza Air 2. It has a really great 4.6 payload, and it will make your life easy. We tested also the D Dreamer 12 mm with the speed booster, and making it 800 grams with this setup it's also front heavy. My advice is if you really want to stretch the full potential of your black magic, to actually use the Moza Air 2 and then you can actually mount your case, your SSD and a lot of other stuff and it will work great. So black magic, a better choice is the Moza Air 2. The Moza Air 2 is kind of packable. You can slide it on your side bag zipper or in the other way, reorganize your inner backpack space. There's also a slide-in solution on my backpack, so I have three choices of carrying the Moza Aircross 2. Maybe you should check out this Manfrotto Mover 50. Whew. This is really a long review. Let's get to an Sony A7 III footage with the Moza Aircross 2.
footage looks good with any weird jitters. If there are some imperfection, I was making them, not the gimbal. Let's make a conclusion. Shall we? The gimbal makes a perfect in the middle field spot between the Ronin SC and the Weeble LED. You will get all the mimic and the tracking functions like the Ronin SC, with a bigger, much more trusted payload of 3.2 kilos. And you will have much more space on the raw arm to nail the low angle shots. You will get a slightly bigger system that will perform like the Weeble LED, just with also stronger motors. And on the Weeble LED side, you should actually not put more than 2 kilos on it cause you will really stress the motors. Either of the gimbal mentions doesn't have so much configurable options on the OLED screen, actually the Ronin S doesn't have a screen at all, and if you want the fine tuning option you have to use the ZY app on the Weeble Lab. The Mozart Cross 2 can be also charged on the go while filming so you could extend your shooting time a lot more. Depending on the system mounted on your Air Cross 2, the battery could last you up to 12 hours. But if you charge your camera with the control cable, the battery percentage could drop faster. Let's say for the heavy use, we are talking about 6 to 8 hours of battery life. Nevertheless, this is a really great gimbal option if you need that middle to heavy weight load capacity with all the gizmos. That's all that I had to say about the Moza Aircross 2. Thumb tap if you liked it, subscribe with the bearing icon to get notified every time I make a new video and see you on my next one.